another famous band, music group, a special singer? Or are you more interested in sports like Formula One or however, Roger Federer, if you're Swiss uh, as I am, maybe you're a fan of Rogers? I don't know whether you um, <laughs> you have a Harley Davidson in your carport would be nice, and you have a lovely tattoo like those uh, two guys have. Or are there some Apple fans with us? Oh, football Lamborghini, that's nice. Oh, it's thanks, thanks, no tie. That's that's fine. <laughs> okay, wonderful. So, or an Apple or Microsoft? Uh, they are both. And tattoo, I mean, that's quite cool. So let's move on. So, I mean, the question there is, do we have our customers or do we treat our customers as kings or do we treat them as a fans? Why is this important and what's the difference? To me, it really is important. I think a fan, or let's start with the, with the king first. Um, the king, he just dictates whatever he wants is the law, and everybody and everything uh, depends on him. So um, everybody has to wait for him as well until he takes his decision. And there's a strong hierarchy, top down. And in this case, if we look at it as, um, as a market, the company is in a very low and weak position, and that's not what we're aiming for, aren't we? So the company in this case, they just can more or less react and not act as they want. Well, the king, um, his position isn't too strong uh, either. When you think of his position, he has to know everything. He has to know whom he can trust or not. Uh, he has to take all uh, the decisions. I mean, this situation isn't um, as comfortable as it might see at the first glance. What about the fans? Well, fans, that's a whole different thing. A fan abhors his star, and the relationship in between both sides normally is based on respect, and um, it's a situation of giving and receiving, and feedback is important because the star he has to gain and regain his uh, the hearts of its fans every day. It's not just given, and the company in this case when they do have fans, they can. Um, act and interact with its customers. And so that's why, to me, this makes a big difference um, whether you really serve a king or whether you have um, a fan. Do you agree with me? Do you see the difference? I hope so. So does any one of you have a, a tattoo? of uh, his, his favorite band, of uh, Harley Davidson. Are you a fan of the brand? Yes, sure, okay, cool. And what about your customers? Do they have tattoos of your company? Are you writing? No, unfortunately not. So that's what we're looking for. Let's see whether we can become Harley Davidson as well or not. <laughs> So let's move on. What's the content of today's um, lesson? And what's in my book? Uh, sure, you agree I can't um, explain in three quarter hours everything I've uh, been writing on 200 pages. So let uh, me try to give you a quick overview of what to me it seems to be important when we talk about service and um, uh, establishment of service culture in your company. So let's see what we have to consider most. Then we talk uh, as well uh, about the benefits, what you can gain out of it. Um, mainly, if there are three things. The key issue is to be unique, 
then of course uh, effective and as well efficient calls that can work together. It's not just high quality high, uh, means high costs. Um, that's history. Uh, you can in introduce a service culture and the high quality at low cost as well. And then let's talk uh, or touch some key success factors. That's what is in this lesson today and what I think I can touch and treat in 45 minutes. Okay, sorry, yes, tattoos aren't acceptable in some cultures that I do agree, but it's just to, to, to show that a fan, a real fan, um, has some identification with, uh, with the brands he loves and he likes to show it, whether it's a tattoo or a shirt or a sticker or something else. Of course, we have to respect uh, the cultures. Thanks. Well, let's move on. Here I am again, Roger Schmidt. I'm 44 years old. Um, I'm from Switzerland. I live in Switzerland. I know other cultures because I'm married with a Peruvian uh, person. So we do have two kids, a daughter, she's got 14, and a boy, 10 years old. After school, I decided not to go to university because in Switzerland, there's um, another possibility of education you can do. So I started as a clerk. Then I um, made some studies. Uh, I received my Bachelor of Business Administration. I did an MBA in information management. So basically business engineering, process engineering, organizational engineering. Um, ten years after that, I made an ABA, uh, MBA in marketing. And well, important to me, still important to me, is uh, my drummers um, studies I did in, in New York. That's more than 20 years ago, because what I learned there, uh, to, um, when you become a professional drummer, that's uh, as well service, because um, like the, the rhythm section is like the basement of a band and has to serve the whole band. So uh, what I learned there, I can really use and um, introduce in my professional work. So maybe I will give some examples as well uh, when I continue this speech. Well, and I do have some 20 years of experience in various uh, positions as a project leader, as a, a line manager, um, always in the customer and service um, experience uh, in, in some, some things like that. Well, so let's move on. If you don't mind, I'll switch off the video so we are sure the connection won't break. I'll come back later to see you. So hi, there's uh, Daniel. Hi, Daniel. OK, let's go on. So where do we come from? That first thing I want to touch a little bit, just to, to mention why service becomes more and more important and, how, and why things changed. Then uh, let's talk about the changes in the information and buying behaviors of our customers today. And I like to touch uh, the sales promotion process um, uh, offering discounts, what the disadvantages and advantages are with discounts, just to open uh, and to introduce why and how we can change things to the better to, for our customers. So when we look at history, it was in about 1870 when Frederick Taylor introduced principles of process steering he analyzed processes in detail and separated the value chain in each process step. And then people became an integrated part of the process. So they had to uh, do repetitive work and just do one simple thing as fast as possible. So they became kind of part of the machine. After World War II in 1950, Henry Ford invented the assembly chain and drastically augmented the process efficiency and reduced the costs. So things in his case, cars, became affordable for almost everybody. So that's like a service, a value added, um, uh, the crowds can profit. 
So um, at this time, everything that has been produced was uh, sold. I mean, that's what that was nice. Uh, it was easy. You just produce, you put it on the market shelf, and the next day it sold. Uh, wonderful, isn't it? Well, things changed. <laughs> Um, over the time, uh, time um, he, uh, there were more competition and uh, sales and market focus and as well customer and competitive focus became more and more important. So that's uh, the time when marketing and sales became important and uh, was introduced. Well, until <clears throat> the year 2000 when really uh, the, um, the markets are stuffed and there's a, for, uh, a heavy competition. So the relationship with the customer became more and more important. That's the time when relation, customer relationship management was the hype. But many of these programs en ended as a simple IT initiative or project and therefore did not bring the wished results. And that's why many projects failed. Unfortunately, still such IT-based CRM projects are being launched. You may know that. And maybe your experience with it as well. Because um, I think CRM, just like my service strategy, uh, needs a holistic approach. You, you can't just start with IT. Because uh, strategies first, then you have to design your processes, take some de decisions as well. Who's going to work uh, those processes, whether you do it in-house or you outsource um, your business. And then it's the IT who follows and enables uh, what you've decided to do. Well, the basics of, the, of the, what we can do today and uh, how we can change the service experience and the customer experience uh, starts in 1970 when the internet was introduced. It would take some time uh, until it became the today's important role. When Google made information easy, accept, uh, accessible, a whole new market and channel opened to the companies and as well to the customers. And nowadays, social media platforms such as Facebook, LinkedIn, Google+, or more known in Switzerland and Germany, Xing, pushed the customer in an even stronger position. So that's when the customer starts to manage the relationship. So that's why I distinguish here CRM, customer relationship management, and customer managed relationship. And the question is, what's next? So to offer in the future a real added value to the customers, companies have to develop and offer uh, solutions that better support customer processes and behaviors. That's why products find, um, that's why Google and Amazon say that today the customer still looks for products. He sh searches it with keywords and things, but tomorrow the products will find their customers. <clears throat> With dig digitalization and uh, the Internet of Things, uh, things become even more customer facing. And this will help more and, and help to delight uh, the customers of tomorrow. So that's where we come from. Things, products, and services become more and more replaceable. And we have to focus on how we do serve uh, our customers how we make sure that we really distinguish uh, us from the competition and every day try to delight our customers. Yeah, let's see whether I translate the book to, to English. Thanks, so there's some interest. Thanks, wonderful, I'm happy. Well, the other thing that changed, let's, let's uh, go on. So that's a bit of the history. <clears throat> Let's see what happens in, in marketing and what happens with uh, information and, and buying behaviors of our customers. As I already mentioned, things have changed with Google, Facebook, Amazon, and so on. While until some five years ago, marketing departments could more or less manage the process of attracting customers, gaining their attention or interest to create, finally, a desire 
which uh, led to the customer's action of buying the products, customers or potential customers today first look for the information, so there's the interest first. They search uh, with keywords for whatever and they receive some results. So that's where then the awareness comes uh, from for different products. And it's then when they take a decision. So before that, um, before that, uh, they contact their colleagues by Facebook. They, they uh, just um, ask in Xing, for example, I've seen that uh, yesterday. Somebody asked, uh, just, uh, I'm looking for a B2B CRM solution. So does anybody has a, a good idea or um, uh, something like that? So that's the way people is acting and interacting today. Then they're approaching, buying, it's delivered. And what's important uh, today is that uh, the internet doesn't forget, you know, that everybody makes his experience with during the sales process with uh, the uh, employees he's interacting and um, as well with the product itself. And whether he likes it or not, he's going to publish his uh, experiences on all those social media platforms. And that's what you're going to find as well when you start searching for things. So it's a whole new um, kind of looking for information, searching products and buying finally the things. Um, so what was a straight uh, forward process and managed by the company today, it's uh, more or less uh, like a pretzel and, and uh, you can't just manage it like you wanted or, or you had uh, done it before. So there you have to be really careful and think about all the, the touch points of the customer and uh, make sure that they work and fit well together. So I'm going to explain this. <laughs> Let's see. It's about promotion, sale promotion, meaning offering discounts, uh, like campaign management and stuff like that. So nowadays, sales promotions still are often used instruments in the marketing mix. Um, in my point of view, marketing departments are too strong focused on their own plannings. The marketing action plan campaigns and promotions um, and not yet uh, at customers processes meaning when a customer needs what and why and that leads to something like that so in this diagram the, the gray part here that means here you offer a discount so you have a sales campaign you have a discount so there are just a few people that really could profit from this uh, sales uh, moment, all those who really need in that, uh, at that moment what you're offering, they're going to be happy because they can purchase a thing at a lower price. So they're going to be happy. Maybe they are delighted and going to speak positively about uh, what they just bought. But there are some others, those who um, just before they, this campaign came out, bought it and then uh, see that there's a, a campaign. So just a week ago, maybe they bought a new fridge and now the, the, the same fridge is offered at a discount of uh, 20 or 30%. So those aren't really happy and not at all at, uh, and used. Same with those who haven't heard about the campaign and uh, just a, a short time after are buying the same product and then uh, her, uh, hear that there has been a promotion and so they haven't profit. So they're neither are really delighted with what ha ha happened. And there may be others who know that there's a campaign. They see that maybe their fridge is old and should uh, be replaced, but actually it works. It still works. But uh, because they don't know whether there's going to be a, a next sales promotion or when they're going to buy already uh, today. So they um, change things before really there's a need. And uh, thinking of um, better serving the customer, 
we should look at uh, ways and processes how can we offer something when really he needs it to uh, an affordable price. So then the customer that is, is going to be uh, satisfied and speak positively about us and our products. Well, when we talk about serving customers, we uh, have to touch as well um, customer relationship management and customer managed relationship. So the, the part we're going to discuss is the relationship itself. So we have to talk about relationship because not every person wishes the same relationship, but that's how we like to treat customers when we're just making action plans. Um, but that's, uh, we have to respect it that uh, ev not everybody wishes the same thing. So um, shortly in a workshop with a casino marketing team here in Switzerland, we were discussing this theme. They wanted to offer a customer card to all of their good customers and were surprised that many of them not wanted to participate. But the marketing mix has to take care of such aspects and find other solutions to interact, identify and inform such customers, those who don't, uh, don't want to participate in such a program. Uh, so it's a mixture of customer relationship management led by the company and customer managed relationship uh, led by the customer itself. It's a question of quality and time of the relationship, which, what you can differentiate. So I put this in this diagram. I think uh, that's more or less or should be more or less clear. Um, you can compare uh, relationships um, to, to animals as well. I tried that once, so uh, let's give me an example. Uh, so you can compare a, a, a person who wants that you manage the relationship. That could be a dog. He wants really that you manage the relationship. A cat who ma uh, manages its relationship himself, you know that if you have a cat. Um, if you try to bind a customer by contract or other things, it's more like a bird in a cave. The cave can be as wonderful as you want, can be golden. However, when the bird is not happy with you uh, and the, the bird does not want to stay, he will just fly away when um, it will just fly away when the door is open. So, oh yes, the, the donkey is, uh, is, is missing. I missed the donkey. So finally, there's the donkey, the, the, the fourth animal. It's okay when you manage the relationship, but from time to time, he stands still and does whatever he wants to. I'm sure you know that. A <laughs> fish in an aquarium. It's about the same. It's like, like the bird, but uh, normally the fish can't just fly away because uh, um, when you open the door there, he's going to die normally. <laughs> Thanks for this. It's, it's fun. Well, okay. Let's talk about CRM. Um, those of you who have uh, studied marketing or maybe touched a CRM in, in his studies know that CRM normally uh, talks about marketing, sales, and service. And they do know as well the customer life cycle. So we, uh, most of us learned it at school and uh, what I think this is like an internal view of, of what happens really. And beside that, there normally we have the communication and corporate communication um, offices and what happens Marketing departments, sales departments, service departments, and communications, each of them have their own goals and are just loosely linked together. And it's hard to, to really make sure that what the customer gets is uh, the same image everywhere 
of uh, of the company. So it's it's really hard. <clears throat> And um, as I work in service departments, I do know that they um, it's it's hard to to get to know uh, what marketing and sales is planning and being uh, good informed. So they do have to work better uh, together. And um, well, the, the question as well is what goals do they have? So marketing, they should attract new customers. Sales. Uh, as I know, uh, as a sales rep representative, um, there are goals like uh, you have to, to visit as many customers as possible. I mean, uh, that's okay, but are you sure that you can, uh, you're going to sell more if you visit as much possible uh, as, uh, customers as possible? And then their service, and um, my experience is that many of those service uh, departments just receive like cost cutting uh, goals, uh, which is contradictory to a good quality service. The question is who is responsible for the, for the customer satisfaction and who really is going to delight the customers? And what's about customer life cycle? Is this really his life cycle? I mean, we talk about customer's life cycle. I think that a customer's process is, is just another thing. I mean, we move, we marry, we get kids uh, and things like that. So we'd better look closer at those processes and, and uh, look uh, how we can better um, organize those customer journeys. So let's come to the definition of service, how I see it and why. In my opinion, service is really the basement of all business. There has to be service in marketing, service in sales, service in all other processes. Uh, even in the management process and support process, you have to serve others. And that's why in the CRM context, I would replace the process service by other processes, so-called order fulfillment, assurance, billing re and revenue management. Each one does add value to the customers. And that's why um, internal customer supplier relationship is important too because everyone does his best to serve the best to the customers, to, to delight and excite them. It has to be an excellent collaboration in between teams and team players. It's just like a band or an orchestra, just when everybody gives his best and collaborates with one another, the gig will be a success. One fault will be heard. Imagine the drummer coming late to the gig, or someone plays in a pause, stands up during the concert and goes to the bathroom. In an orchestra, it's normal to give direct and open feedback, positive and negative. So responsibilities and competences are clear, the context and the structure is given. Creative flexibility is defined. And the responsibility for the overall delivery and success belongs to everybody. Well, management is responsible to create a strong vision to define and implement the necessary framework and create an environment of trust, creativity, possibilities for growth and development. They shouldn't work directly in the daily business. The daily business should be organized in a way that the person serving a customer or potential customer can handle and act the case from the customer perspective end to end. This means delegation of responsibilities and competences of decision taking and acting to these persons serving a customer. The goal is to eliminate escalation for decision taking in a customer operational context. So that may be a, 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 a big change for many, for many companies, I think. So my definition of service is service 
is everything that creates an added value for someone else. And the goal are smiling customers. Question, who is your customer? What customer segments do you serve, internal and external? Do you know their needs? What benefit, what value can you add to their businesses? And how can you make them successful? You might write uh, in the message box. So who's your direct customer? What person are you serving? Is it internal staff? Is it another, another department? Is it the paying customer? Okay. External, CEO, CFO, inside out. Okay. Okay. Airlines, ocean freight forwarders. Interesting. External market. Do we have any managers here? People manager? Yes, okay, external, yes. So manage, the manager, um, I mean, your direct customers, the persons who should profit the most of what you're doing is the staff or your employees, isn't it? So those, in my point of view, are internal customers as well. So you have to create a value for those people as well. You have to enable them, you have to plan them well, support them, be there, things like that. Do you agree? So right, <laughs> absolutely. Happy internal customers will make external customers happy. That's correct. We're gonna touch that. Good point, thanks. So wonderful, you, you agree. So that's what I think about service. The so service is wherever you do something that adds value for someone else. Let's move on. So because it's all about managing customer expectations and experience. Thanks, great, great way to think. Yeah, that's it. So let's let's see this. I like to introduce uh, to you the um, the letter that Ron Kaufman, uh, a, a speaker as I am, and he, he's uh, just a, a person who inspired me thinking about service. He introduced uh, the six levels of service. Let's start right here at the criminal level service. So the criminal level service breaks a service promise. It violates even minimum expectations. Those customers will never ever come back. Maybe they tell you that it wasn't okay, but for sure they will tell others and it gets easily on air and online. So that's really not what we're looking for. The basic service still is disappointing. It's the bare minimum basics. And this level leads to frustration. It's late, it's slow, it's incomplete or impolite. Also, soul served customers will never come back. They may not even complain, so you can't learn anything. They may tell friends to avoid, uh, to avoid your company. So what we have to do or get to uh, at least, we have to serve an expected service, but that's still nothing special. Sorry, I have to switch off this phone. I thought I switched it off, but I didn't. Okay. Um, so it's nothing special. It's really what we what we have or you have to deliver. Um, if there are no better options, the customer may come back to you. It's an uh, acceptable service. It's okay, but today in today's competitive markets, this will not be enough. For sure, those customers 
um, will look for other possibilities, other opportunities, um, other suppliers. So we have to move on this ladder. A desired service is what your customer is looking for. It is what a customer hopes for and prefers. That is really what he wants. And such a uh, service becomes personal. That's important. It's not just um, serving a crowd, it's serving one person. So it's different for one person. This might be speed that counts. For another, the variety of options. Or for a third person, uh, this could be uh, technical details. So as you can see, you have to know your customers. And if you don't already know them, you will have to have good knowledge of human nature to quickly get an idea of this customer entering uh, your shop or uh, getting in contact with you. So you have to expect uh, to, to have an idea uh, of how he most probably will behave and uh, take decisions and act. Let's move on. Surprising. A surprising service is something special. That's it. It is surprising, as it's said. Something unexpected, like an unexpected gift. Surprising services make you standing out of the crowd. Customers love it and come back over and over again and are glad to tell their friends. And really here, you make a differentiation in between you and your competitors. That's becoming hard to copy when you really uh, make in place or stage your uh, interactions in this way. So let's remember the last time when you received a gift you truly enjoyed, a gift that came by surprise and delighted you. Didn't it just feel great? So make sure that you make a difference between a gift, what you like, and one that your customers like. It's important you're serving another person. Uh, the definition of service was um, value added to another person. So what you like might not be what uh, the other person likes. You have to serve them, not you. And last but not least, an unbelievable service is an astonishing and fantastic service. A service one will never forget. That's an experience um, who might become a legendary and widely shared by your loyal customers and talked about by your pride, uh, with pride and your colleagues. So here's an example, a story. My assistant had a few weeks ago a problem with uh, one eye. It was made red, was sometimes swelled and hurt. Therefore, she went to an oculist, so a specialist uh, for eyes, who should help her. After having waited a felt eternity, she was so-called served. The doctor examined the eye just quickly and prescribed her a uh, medicine, an ointment. Unfortunately, this also did not help after days of deprecation, and she went to another doctor. Same procedure. The chance wanted that she also needed new glasses and passed, therefore, in an optician's business. The serving optician saw the inflamed eye and asked whether he may have a closer look at it. Well, my assistant agreed, up to now, finally, the specialist could not help her. The petition took himself time to examine the eye carefully and finally found the problem causer, an imperative. Certainly, like he's not a doctor, he could not remove it himself, but the next contacted doctor could easily do this because now it was clear where the problem came from. So the expectation of my assistant was that the specialist could have helped her and she desired a fast solution. Unfortunately, this was not the case. So my assistant was frustrated and will not recommend the consulted doctors. That was basics, huh? see that? 
So that's why he will not recommend the doctors. So it's a mo uh, <clears throat> much more likely that she will advise against them. So however, the optician's business or the optician, he really has surprised her and delighted her. So that was here at this level. She had expected uh, a simple glasses discussion. However, she has got a competent discussion, professional eye examination and the solution for her lasting problem. So the next glasses, she will with guarantee buy at this optician, even if it's much more expensive. And she will recommend this uh, optician's business and tell her story all over, just like I'm doing today. <laughs> yes, going to doctors becoming a criminal. Nice, nice. Well, just one thing you have to take care. When we set up things like that, we, we're going to discuss it. We're going to think about processes. We have to think about what's expected. We have to manage those things. We are going to talk about that. Whatever you offer here, desire to surprising. If it stays the same thing all over, it climbs down this ladder. So what was surprising becomes then desired. It becomes expected, basic and criminal. So make sure that from time to time you change things. So it's a creative approach serving and surprising customers. It's not just a, a program. You have to think and rethink uh, every day about those things. And um, what's important, you have to enable your staff, your employees, and you have to delegate um, competencies that they can act uh, in, this, in this way. Does this make sense to you until now? How is it? Yes, okay, you like it? Okay, thank you. Well, but now we, uh, uh, we've been speaking about expectations. Now we have to manage it. So how can we do that? Um, how do we measure uh, whether a service experience is criminal, basics, expected, desired, surprising, or unbelievable? That's the question. And where do these expectations come from? And who fulfills them? So here is where marketing, sales, and fulfillment comes together. Marketing and corporate communications are sending out messages online and offline using the whole panoply of today's marketing and communication possibilities. So that's the external marketing. Huh? Corporate communication. So web flyers, posters, adverts, blogs, etc., whatever. The customers, they filter all this information and they combine it with their needs, wishes, beliefs, experiences, and they create a proper image of the company, their products and services. And that's why um, the image of, 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 of your company is uh, slightly different from customer to customer because not everybody has the same experiences and expectations. And uh, so it's really, it, it's different and that's why you should uh, treat a customer like he wants each one personally the best possible. Well, essential is that the employees, so we move here, have every necessary information to fulfill the target of delighting customers. They have to have the necessary competences, I said that before, and the freedom to act in the sense of the customer as well as the company. Therefore, it's crucial that companies first have to delight their employees to assure that these persons then can delight the customers. We had that, huh? someone mentioned it before in the chat. That's correct. And that's what internal marketing has to uh, assure uh, 
and um, uh, it's it's really important. So employees, the de delight employees first, then they can act uh, in front of your customers, and they will surely delight your um, customers as well. If because if they are a uh, hundred percent committed to the company. Um, that's what you're looking for. Your customers will become fans at that moment. Where service really happens is here. Huh? So last but not least, the service interaction, the interactive marketing has to be produced and staged. And that's front office and back office. So really the end-to-end -end customer experience has to be managed. The stage setting has to be well thought, designed, tested, and implemented. And implementation means you have to train and retrain and train and train and train again. That's uh, what I said is one experience I take from my drumming, um, professional drumming, because there as well you have to to learn so many things and then you have to just practice it and that's where time normally is missing in a business context. So but of course uh, the result is that just a perfect production can assure a continuously high level of service quality and th that the positioning and the brand message can always be held. I mean that's important to me, that's uh, how I see those things and how it work together. And the same goes for your business partners. When you are outsource things, those are representing your company and your products. So they have to, to uh, treat your customers the same way. So they have to make sure that your brand uh, message is always transported also by, by those. So in this case, you have to make sure that you can delight uh, your partners as well, just like your employees, then you can be sure that your customers will be delighted. And it's all about involvement. Involve all those people, they have the experience uh, working with the customers, they know what the customers need, they know what adoptions at the products should have been uh, made and things like that. So work with customers and employees together, uh, customers and um, partners and employees together and customers as well. Interact with these persons. Make sure they have everything they need to delight your customers. Then you're going to be fine. Well, let's move on to the components of a service strategy. I just mentioned the, 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 um, well, the most important ones. In my book, there are some more or some more details about all those subjects. So let's see. There's leadership. We'll talk about some core competences. We'll talk about the marketing mix and the way you should implement and assure the transformation of a company. Well, leadership, service, excellence in management, we can call that. Well, what we need there are serving leaders. And the servant leadership is based on selflessly serving one's team, organization, or community rather than power, domination, or self-interest. Such leaders think the future, they inspire other persons, they enable and support others, and they walk the talk. So what they do, uh, what they say, they do themselves. They serve their company and its people. They create a working environment which is challenging and fun at the same time. It's neither control, uh, command control nor laissez-faire. It's a well-organized structure that delights employees and business partners with a clear, meaningful vision, relevant goals, and the widely delegation of competences to the operational business. That's leadership in a service context. 
What about the core competencies? So one of the key factors is, as I mentioned, human knowledge. Meaning to understand how and why people act, how they take decisions, and why they do, and um, yeah, take decisions the way they do, and being able to act or react appropriate. So you have to be able to differentiate human types and understand how humans make decisions. So you will need some basic knowledge of neurosciences. And uh, third, you should have good oral and written service and customer oriented communication skills. This includes the body language and you should know uh, something about first and last impression. Well, as I mentioned before, your service has to be set on stage. So let's talk about marketing mix. Well, you certainly know the seven P's. Four P's, it's common seven P's for service uh, companies. So what about our products? Customers normally love the choice. So make sure that customers can choose in between things and option. That th that's something which is uh, part of the service um, strategy. Then prices. The composition of a product has to be reflected in the price. And this has to be understandable. Certainly, you know that, that uh, you have a price list and it's hard to follow and to understand how really the price is calculated. And uh, price reduction can help to attract customers, that's for sure. But try to do this following a customer's process and not just following a marketing action plan. Let's move to the place. I mentioned the touch point management is a key success factor because customer experience is all over and um, the customer, he changes in between all the channels you offer him. Um, and uh, as I said, you have to make sure that, that this is set on stage. So every interaction online and offline has to delight the customers and send the same brand message. So promotion. An integrated communication marketing have to assure that expectations are well managed and the fulfilling departments able to satisfy and delight the customers. Remember the triangle I, I showed before? Let's move on to processes. Well-engineered processes distinguish standard pro, uh, procedures, which can be automated to a high degree, specialized tasks and exceptions. This assures speed, low cost, and quality. So that's important, I think, really. You have to look at your process and find out what's a standard process and how you can automate it and how you can uh, serve your, custom, uh, your customers as well in a self-service situation or your employees with uh, the, the right information at the right time. So process engineering has an important part in service engineering as well. And last but not least, the physical evidence. Whatever service you offer, make sure that there is some kind of a proof. Make it visible. That's a problem of service. It's invisible normally. So this could be a certification or a simple note, like in a hotel under a bed when you look there and there's uh, an information, yes, we also cleaned here. I mean, that's funny, it's surprising. And if really it uh, has been cleaned up, um, you, you're gonna be happy, I think. And last but not least, and that's why it's in the center, it's all about people. Make sure that your people are, people are delighted. As I said, delight your staff and business partners first. They then will delight the customers. Well, finally, make sure that the implementation of a service strategy is done with a professional project and change management. It will take some time to change a company's culture to a service culture. 
well, approximately three to five years. So you will need to follow a roadmap. Make sure that the implementation, the transformation is well managed because really people have to, to change. They have to gain and regain new, um, new knowledge and new behaviors. And that's hard to get. So what can you benefit of a good implemented service strategy? There are three things. There is uniqueness, effectiveness, efficiency. So what's in for you? First of all, you'll become unique. By being so, you become more and more attractive to customers. And what's important, uh, you become attractive as well to business partners and employees. You will stand out of the crowd and be able to set the standards rather than just to follow and react. So you're in an acting position. You can build something, uh, create something. And uh, that's why you will be able to break out of the price war in this case, and also of the war for talents. By rethinking your business model, you'll find out what customers to serve. That's the second point, because it's not necessary to solve all. That's what uh, many businesses today try to. They like to serve all, and so that they're, uh, they never become a specialist in something. It's more important to serve the right ones, the right customers. Then it becomes uh, easier to delight them, because you know them better. You know their needs, your, their beliefs and what they expect from you. And uh, that, that's when you become more effective. So the second point, effectiveness. Third point, efficiency. Superb service quality, as I already said, and efficiency aren't contradictory. By designing your processes, identifying and implementing standard procedures, delegating competences and power to operations, by assuring quality and so on, your fail failures will decrease, as well as your complaints, damages, and acquisitions. Your customers and employees will stay long with you, and innovation will accelerate and increase. All of this will by far compensate your investment in service quality optimization. And by the way, uh, yourself will be delighted as well because you will gain freedom as a manager and have time for more important things. Well, let's come to the end with the key success factors by introducing um, a service strategy in your company. Well, first of all, it's the management commitment. If you want to introduce a service-based strategy, this might be a major change to your company and to your company culture. Uh, that's why you need the commitment of your management, because without the commitment of the top management, this will never happen. You know that for sure. Second, leadership. We've been talking about leadership. There will be problems coming along when you make such a change, that's for sure. Even if you plan the work, there will be unknown stuff and you have to handle this. You should integrate people and communicate in an open and transparent way. Assure that people see the need for change and give them a clear objective, a service vision. Just as we mentioned, think the future and give them a service vision that they want to achieve, and then inspire and support them, and as I said, walk the talk. Um, sure, so what, what's that, Roger, you, I like that you added time as key, oh, key success, for, you're right, I mean, I'm going gonna, I gonna to touch this point, huh? it's important. 
So let's continue with project leader and project management. Um, well, such a change is really to be managed and it's not something that you can do in your daily business. So that's why you have to choose a project management uh, methodology and have the right project leader. Uh, so make sure that this is uh, set in place. And if you don't have experience, um, you, you don't have professional project management in place, um, don't hesitate really to, to contact an, uh, an external support, um, somebody. It's, uh, it's way worth the money. And well, change management or management of change, I like more to, to call it like this, because you have managed to change. Um, it's, it's for sure people have to understand why and where they are going. Uncertainty has to be managed critical votes taken in consideration. So listen to your people. There has to be a certain pressure as well as hope and confidence. It's both, you need really both. Last but not least, I said this earlier, take some time. Time is important. And you have to give this to you and to your people. Uh, there will be quick wins and you have to look for the quick wins. And the adoption of the processes and, and structures, they may be done within one or two years, but the, culture, the cultural change will take for sure more time. Uh, so calculate with uh, three to five years, as I mentioned before. That's really important. Uh, look for that and um, be patient, be patient and stay connected and um, manage this change. It's important. Well, that's it for today. Um, I wish you all the best uh, already, personally, with your studies and in your business. And uh, well, I'm ready for answer some questions. Well, you're welcome. Thanks, thanks, okay, wonderful. So soon, well, it's, uh, it's an hour. <laughs> if you think it's, it's, uh, it's, it's okay. Wonderful, so you like that? Wonderful. Well, I hope you, you can read my book in German, otherwise you can contact me and we show what we can do. You loved it, thank you, wonderful. Well, I loved it as well, it was a good experience. Um, I'm gonna write my contact data here so you can contact me at this email. If you want, if you have something special, just write me to this email or go to my website. It's just a black elephant.ch. There you have further information. Unfortunately, it's just in German or French. I don't know whether we have French speaking persons here or not. Okay, there's a question. Customer is always king, is different from customer asking. Right? Okay, that's that's right. I mean, um, you can make distinguish this. It's just the, the 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 image of a king. I don't like whether it's uh, it's a customer as a king or treat him as a king or um, or is always king. It really depends what you mean with it. Huh? Whether our customer is a king and you have this service mindset, just like I tried to explain. Then it's it's okay. Otherwise. I prefer the fan uh, picture. Two elephants understand German for sure. <laughs> I'm a Swiss German speaking person, so just write me in, in German. You may write me in French as well or Spanish. That's it, <laughs> four languages. Sorry, there's no other language. <laughs> a king customer is a dictator, okay.
we have a perception in North America the customers are always right. No Italian, Spanish, sorry. But you, you might write me in Italian, so I, 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 let's see whether I can <laughs> help you in Italian then or in other language. Well, let's go to the point, North America, the customers are always right. Um, I just traveled, uh, not North America, the, uh, the East Coast of America, and I, I didn't felt that I was always right. <laughs> but it's okay. I, I love America, it's wonderful. Making the delay is kind of modern. Well, yes, I think so. Um, employees, delightful. You have to delight your employees. You have to love your people and you have to make sure that you engage the, um, the people who really are able then to delight uh, your customer. So they do have to fit in your team. It's just like in an orchestra or in a band, as I mentioned, uh, there you have really to make sure that the person who joins the group fits in this group because what a customer gets is always um, one, uh, one result of a customer experience. It's not just one person serving. Well, arrogance, yeah, it's a thing. Don't bullshit the customer. Yeah, that's what I mean with um, uh, having a knowledge of human nature. I mean, you, you have to really try to understand where does the customer come from? Where's he at? What does he know already? Uh, what language does he speak? Meaning, is he a professional or does, does uh, he know the, the right expressions or not? It's just, first of all, you have to listen and make sure that you understand what, what really he needs and what he wants to. And uh, when you know the different types of customers, it's not customer segmentation, different types of, of human beings, when you're experiencing that, you, you can see whether a person needs more details or is a person who wants uh, to be dominant and uh, will decide quickly and things like that. That's uh, experience, you can learn that as well. Yeah, don't lie, that's for sure. I mean, today, uh, as I mentioned in the information and communication process or, or behavior, it's just you lie, they're gonna find it out and then it comes back to you in a negative way. So, better make sure, be true, say what you know, and then when you don't know anything, uh, something, you just uh, better say, mention it or even if, if uh, really a competitor has the better solution for what you can offer today, it may, it's, it's better to, to lead this um, customer to the, to the competition. So by doing so, I'm sure this customer, whenever he's got another problem, he's coming back to you, knowing that uh, you're not cheating, you, you don't want to sell something, uh, you're honest, and uh, when you've got a, a good solution to his problem, he's going to buy it with you. Okay, CMR is a new app for you. Okay, cool. So you learned something here. <laughs> uh, 39 uh, in, in US dollars. Well, it's one to one, so it's 39 uh, US dollars as well. If you want to order it, you can order it by, by my um, homepage or say to the, to the school and uh, I'm going to send, uh, send it to you, okay? But it's in German. Hope that's fine. Are there other questions, remarks, something? Uh, there's an e-copy on um, Amazon, Amazon.de. So the German Amazon, there's a Kindle version you can download. It's something like 35 francs, I think. 
Well, thanks. It was my pleasure. Can be easily translated, maybe. <laughs> Let's find it out. <laughs> Amazon, yes. Amazon. Okay. There's a kind of version. So, last question. Anybody? No? Okay. So, well, thanks a lot. Okay, someone, Yvette, rating something. Let's see. Well, thanks. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Well, wonderful. Let's stay in touch. I mean, you can find me on LinkedIn, Xing, Facebook, uh, wherever. Well, I could come to Africa. <laughs> you might invite me. Why not? Never been there. Okay, Thomas, maybe they are recording it. I hope so. Yes, they do. So maybe you get a copy of that. So wonderful. Yes, we are. Uh, yes, we are recording it. So you can. It's going to be uploaded in the in the library within three days. So you can watch it again. Wonderful. I'm online again. <laughs> yes. So uh, your last chance to ask questions. In and if there are no more questions, then I would like to thank Mr. Roger for the presentation, and hopefully we are going to welcome him back soon. Well, my pleasure. Thanks. Would be fine. Well, bye bye everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.